Hi folks, Eric here for Diversitech. In this video, we're talking about ductless condensate and highlighting the Quiet Mini M from Assurity. Let's get to it. Let's talk about ductless condensate pumps and choosing whether or not to use one. Ductless systems typically come with a gravity drain, which works very well and requires pretty low maintenance. Pumps add another layer of complexity and require more maintenance, but sometimes they're very necessary if there's not a way to put in a gravity drain. I recommend putting in a gravity drain if it's possible. If a gravity drain is not possible, then you're going to have to choose a pump. Let's talk a little bit about pumping. When choosing a pump, you want to know how many feet of head it can push or how high it can push and can it push as high as you need. And what that is, is the vertical measurement between the top of the pump and the highest point you're going to pump to. The next piece is, where are we going to drain this to? A lot of times a pump will pump up, over, and dump into a larger pipe to drain the water away from it. If, however, a larger pipe is not available to put the tube into the top of, we may run that small discharge tube down below the level of the top of the pump. If we run that tube, below the level of the top of the pump, we run the risk of having to reprime the entire system and damaging the pump if it's siphon dry. Included with the Quiet Mini M is an anti-siphon valve. On the valve, you're going to find a directional arrow. In this case, with this orientation, the arrow is pointing down. If we install that anti-siphon valve at the top of this vertical run, the anti-siphon valve will introduce air at that location and allow this vertical section to drain without pulling any water out of the pump. Next up, installation time. Let's put this pump underneath this unit. To start with, we need to figure out exactly where it goes under here. On the top of the pump, we have the water inlet, which is the drain coming out of the unit. We have our power connection wires here and we have our discharge tubing coming out of the pump. So this is gonna to need to go back through the wall and outside, while the end of this wire needs to end up in this compartment up here with the rest of these. Let's start with pulling the wire up in place. Now what I've done is I've actually pushed a piece of copper wire down through the unit, and we're gonna put a hook in the bottom of it, tie it onto these, and pull that back up and through using the wire and a little bit of electrical tape. Okay, now that I've got the cable pulled all the way through, I'm gonna let this pump hang on this cable. It's a pretty strong cable, the pump is not very heavy, and this is really useful as a third hand while we're lining all the holes up, getting them marked, drilled, and the screws put in. On this particular job, the customer wants a really nice wood backplane behind the unit. So this makes it very easy to drill into. If you're going into something like drywall, you may need to put some anchors in there. So what we need to do is actually put the unit up. We're gonna use a long awl to mark the center of the holes all the way through the unit, and then we're gonna drill the holes. We want to keep the top of the pump about a quarter inch or just a little bit more below the bottom of the unit so that the cover can slide on after we're done putting this in here. To do that, I'm actually using a long quarter inch hex bit and I'm just gonna lay it on top of this and I'm gonna use that as a spacer because these are from flat side to flat side a quarter inch. The bottom of this head unit is level so we're gonna match that to the top of the pump. I'm using a long awl to go through the mounting holes on both sides, and we're going to just mark the center of each hole. Now you notice when you look at this, the back of this pump, these holes are not straight across from each other. So 
don't expect any marking up here to be straight across or the same distance down from the unit. The pump requires a longer screwdriver to get all the way through the body to put the screws in. With the indoor unit right above it, it's really hard to get a drill in there to go straight. So I'm going to use a long shank screwdriver. One tip on this is the head of the screws do not fit through the front hole. You need to insert the screw through the rubber grommet and then use the screwdriver to drive the screw in while the rubber grommet holds onto the screw and keeps it from falling out. Be careful not to over tighten and smash that rubber too hard. You just want the back of the screw head to barely contact the rubber grommets. Now that the pump is in place, let's put the drain line from the unit into the top of it. Now that the pump is mounted, we can slide the cover on. Now we need to make sure the discharge line is connected to the tubing going outside. Next, we're going to cut this cable off so that there's not a lot of extra hanging out where we'd have to try to find some place to put it. As you know, there's not a lot of room in these mini splits. Hold on to the end of this cable for just a minute. The labels on here tell you what each conductor does. Most mini split systems use a three wire interconnection between the indoor and the outdoor unit. We need to get power in one of those and we're going to hook up the safety switch so that if this pump ever stops or overflows, it shuts the unit and the system down. To do that, we need to put some pigtails under the lugs inside the unit and then make wire nut connections where multiple conductors need to get connected. To figure out where to connect the wires coming from the pump, I consulted the manufacturer's recommendations for connecting a condensate pump to their units. This is always the best path, as they know their units best. In the instructions, there is a universal recommendation for connections. If you choose to go that route and use that universal, make sure all the connections into the thermistor are done very, very well. Because thermistors are a resistance device, if you make a high resistance connection, the system may not operate exactly like it's supposed to. The pump will run off either 120 volts or 240 volts. There are four conductors coming in the cable. Light blue and brown are your power wires. If you have 120 volts, hook the light blue to neutral and the brown to hot. If you have 240 volts, hook them both to the hot conductor. The black wires are the shutdown relay. Remember, when you're done, always do a tug test on your wires to make sure they are firmly in the wire nut. The wires are folded in, the cover is on the control box. Let's talk about maintenance. To clean and service the undermount Quiet Mini M pump, first we need to take the cover off. To get the cover off, grasp it firmly on both sides and pull straight out. Once the cover is removed, do a visual inspection. Then find the tank and push on the side of it where my thumb is. That releases the catch and drops the tank down. Inside the tank, you'll find a small screen that needs to be cleaned. That screen goes in between the inlet to the tank and the actual pump inlet itself and catches any big debris that may come through the drain. Inside the tank, you'll also find the float assembly. This uses a magnetic float and switch. The magnetic float itself is captive on the post. However, it may need to be cleaned with a rag or a brush if there's any debris or buildup on it. You can also take the tank loose if it needs cleaning or flushing by removing it from the small hose on one end. Make sure the outlet to that tank is clean and clear. Check the hose that connects to the tank and the spring that's inside of that hose to keep it from collapsing. Once the inside of the tank is clean and the screen is clean, reinstall the screen in the slot in the middle of the tank. While holding onto the screen, reconnect the tank to the discharge hose. Connect the two snaps on the inside of the tank first and the outside of the tank last. Once the tank is reattached, reinstall the cover Now you've cleaned and done a maintenance on a quiet Mini M. We hope you find this video useful and it's expanded your knowledge of condensate solutions for mini splits. 
Thanks for watching.